This series is all about watching Casey Neistat's 800 vlogs and trying to learn from the storytelling and the editing elements he has in these videos. Like last episode, he's feeling out punch-ins. He's using it as kind of an emotional connection to the audience, kind of like a, all right, let's bring it in, come on. Casey's studio is in the style of bricolage. It's uh, kind of an organized chaos. His office is pretty much a wide open version of Tom Sachs' studio. Tom Sachs is the mentor of Casey and his brother Van. Um, I think that Van worked there a really long time and up until very recently, and Casey kind of went off to do his own thing, including the vlog. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that you can be derivative of something, and as long as you make it your own, then you're not ripping somebody off. I think, at least. How do you always have a brilliant idea for your videos? Thanks for the compliment. I don't always have a brilliant idea. If you were to reduce any one of my movies down to a single idea, you would find a perfectly mediocre idea. It's the execution that matters, never the idea. So what so what he's saying here is that the content is the thing that matters. It's it's not the gear, it's not the person who you are. So I think he's wrong in one aspect. I don't think that he would have the notoriety he has today or the subscribers or the success if he hadn't done all the work. He's, he's done so much in the, the commercials that he's done, in the movies that he's created, and then in the series that he did on HBO. He's gotten a lot of, he's gotten a fan base. He's already got a lot of people there. So he says the content matters. So how about this? Um, you know, growing up in rural Iowa, I didn't really have a lot of friends, and I would dream of finding the right person. I would dream of, of finding the right person to share my time with. Not just a friend, but, but somebody who I could fall in love with. And I, through the years, I just, I've, I've found people, but I haven't found love. I never really, never really got that, that bite, that pang of, of just really, you know, smack you in the face kind of love. That is until about a few years ago when I moved here to Arizona. Moving out here was a great decision. It, it allowed me to kind of spread my wings and, and fly. It allowed me to understand the world a little bit better. But ultimately, what it really helped me to do was to find my true love. To find the person who, who just really, just really knew me. And that was this rock. This rock helped me understand myself. I love it so much. See, I just don't think, I don't think that it is, I don't think that it is content. So while content is king, yes, I don't really think anybody wants to watch an entire series about how I love my rock. I mean, okay, so I, how somebody loves a rock. So I mentioned this in the last episode that you set your camera up somewhere, you walk away from it, uh, and then you walk back to it, and then you cut them all apart so it doesn't show you walking back to your camera. Those are called jump cuts. I mentioned them in the last episode, but I, I failed to mention the actual name for it. So it's, it's called a jump cut. The reason why I bring this up is because disillusionment is a large part of learning how to edit and, and tell stories. You have to know how the sausage is made, so to speak. So when I was a kid, uh, I went to a television set and I found out that there were uh, fake tables, fake backgrounds, and, and I asked my dad about that and he showed me westerns and how they have a fake background and, and all that stuff is basically like a theater set. And, and that really broke, broke the mystery for me and so I got into film and television to look and see that in different places. And I would watch movies like E.T. I'd watch it like a thousand times because I couldn't figure out what was real and what wasn't real. Um, the, the, the whole point of all of this is just to say when somebody is walking, picking up their phone and walking back, you, you understand immediately how they did that. But to the layman, to the person who's just watching it, you know, they just see it as it's it's being shot. Th that the person might have a whole whole troop of people behind them setting those up. I read a comment on the internet, and it said, he's just pointing the camera, he's just pointing the camera and that's it. Blah, blah, blah. Kind of like that. It's just it's just so clueless. They, they just see the world so linearly. They, they're, they're trapped behind the illusion. All right, so that's it for this episode. That was uh, six through 10. <laughs> and so the next episode, hopefully I can get pretty far. It'll be 11 through whatever. So we'll start with 11. Um, that's about it, that's all I got.